Today, my featured guest is Gregory L. Frank, and you can find him at empireflippers.com. Empireflippers.com. What a great branded name. Don't, aren't you just interested, Startup Nation, in what this guy does? He flips empires. What does that actually mean? We're going to get into it. So Gregory is the head of marketing at Empire Flippers, the world's leading marketplace for buying and selling established and profitable, that's important, profitable online businesses. That means they got cash flow coming through them, okay? Which makes them attractive to potential acquirers. So the company, which operates with a 100% remotely distributed team all over the world, has appeared in the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing private companies five years in a row. They're badasses, Startup Nation. You may want to grab your pen and paper. You're going to take notes vigorously. Gregory was the fourth employee at Empire Flippers and helped the company grow into a 90-plus team. He also has become the go-to advisor for entrepreneurs looking for life-changing, life-changing exits from their online businesses. I've been in this place. You're five years in. You're like, it's working, but you know what? It no longer fulfills me. It no longer does it for me. You know, I think I want to do something else, something more. I want greater impact. All right, who's interested in this ATM machine that's automated that I built, right? And so he matches you up, right, with investors who want to put their money in digital assets to get them the highest returns. So we're going to get into it today with Gregory. We're going to speak about the top three things a potential acquirer cares about in a seller's market. And if you're like, Joseph, I'm not there yet. Like I haven't even hit six figures. Nobody's going to want my company. Okay, that's okay. Gregory's going to speak to you and teach you practical advice on growing your existing business, even if you're not planning to ever sell it. So that's the conversation today. Gregory L. Frank, welcome to your first 100K, top 100 podcast in entrepreneurship. Go ahead and take 20 seconds, maybe 21 seconds. Fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I appreciate the warm welcome. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to offer some value to the audience. So as you said, I'm the head of marketing at EF. I'm originally from Alaska, uh, born and raised there. I've worked in the oil fields for a while up there before getting into marketing. And so I know the struggle of a lot of your audience are trying to make something happen, maybe on the side as a hustle, you know. Uh, and now I live in Vietnam, I'm a digital nomad. I've been with EF for six years and traveled all over the world speaking to entrepreneurs. Uh, we were just talking offline um, a couple months ago. I was in Dubai in front of like 7,000 entrepreneurs speaking on stage, which was cool. It's like one of the conferences I've always wanted to uh, uh, attend as a speaker. So that was a bit of a, a dream come true for me. That's awesome, brother. So you spoke in front of an audience of 7,000 people. That's no small task, right? Sometimes your confidence is rocked. You're like, oh, I don't know. What if they don't like me? What if they reject me? What if I get booed like on American Idol or something? What's going to happen? So anyway, I just acknowledge you for that. Uh, take a minute, share something personal about you that very few people in your business life actually know. Sure. I, I say my, my friends in the business world are connected with me on Facebook know this, but if you're not connected to me on Facebook, you probably don't. Uh, I am a huge literature nerd. So I write novels for fun and I write poetry for fun. So my, my Facebook is like a mixture of business, poetry, and funny memes. <laughs> so I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I actually wake up almost every day and will write a little bit of fiction just to like like my morning coffee as a, as a cleanser to start the day. <laughs> mm. So does that make you a master content marketer for Empire Flippers? <laughs> I don't know about master, but I actually do teach my team uh, how to write better copy, how to write better mm. content by learning storytelling. Because like, if you think about it from a copywriter perspective, writing a novel, like a novelist that writes a good novel is like the best copywriter in the world. They like, literally made you care about a, a thing you know is made up, right? Like you just, you know, it's fiction. It's on the, it's on the tin, right? Uh, so I think there's a lot of really powerful copyright lessons you can actually learn from novelists. So I actually train people on copywriting with some storytelling techniques. All right. So when you first joined Empire Flippers, you, you come in, right? They're down located in Vietnam at the time. You told me offline here just a few minutes ago. You join them. You relocate to Vietnam from the United States of America. 
I mean, paint us a picture. How'd it go? You walk in day one uh, into this new place, new team, new people, and they're like, all right, here's what we need you to do. Now go do it. Like, paint us a picture. Tell us that story. How'd you get them to the six figures if they weren't there yet? If they were there yet, how'd you get them to the next decimal point, extra zero? Tell us that story. Paint us a vivid picture, would you? Sure. So we were like maybe a high six figure company in terms of evaluation when I joined. Not very big. I, like I said, I was employee number four and we were working at it out of an Airbnb that we were all sharing. So it's not like something glamorous, right? Uh, and over the years, we've now become a multiple eight figure company. We're right around like probably like 40, 50 million, maybe a little bit higher than that now in terms of our valuation. So yeah, I've seen a lot of growth. Uh, when I first came out, like so remember, uh, I was leaving the best job I ever had in the oil field. It was like the one job where I wasn't covered in chemicals for 12 hours a day. I was actually working in a windowless office because it's like top secret type of stuff, even though I was just like copy and pasting things into a spreadsheet. But uh, like, I remember leaving that job thinking like, oh my God, this is terrifying because I've always had a passion for marketing, but no one would ever let me in because I'm like, no, I'm not college educated or anything like that. I'm all self-taught. Uh, but I took this job and my boss, which was like my best boss in the oil field, he's like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Uh, this is so cool. And as you might imagine, there's a lot of tough bosses in the oil field. This was not one of them. And uh, he asked me, where, where will I be going? I told him Vietnam. And the first thing he looked at me is like, Greg, is this real? Like, are you sure? <laughs> like, well, I don't know. It might not be. I'll, tell, I'll let you know when I arrive. <laughs> I may or may not be catfished when I get there. Yes. <laughs> right. So so I, I get to Vietnam um, and, you know, I meet the guys like the timid from uh, coming from like in the oil field. Like I want to say it's a structured life, but you have like very clear things you need to do. Right. Uh, when I came to this, I thought, like, OK, they're going to give me like my blog assignments or, you know, what I'm going to be writing about. But like the first day was more like, OK, welcome to the team, Greg. So uh, what do you think you should do? <laughs> I was like, well, uh, like you guys don't have an idea. I'm like, well, we haven't really thought this far ahead yet. Like, okay. So <laughs> I started like thinking uh, as a marketer, like what would I want? Cause I was obsessed with internet marketing. I like, like I always knew there was this other world. So I, I was like already very much like embroiled into the ecosystem, if you will. Uh, so I came up with a lot of the ideas. Uh, there's still blog posts. There's a blog post series called the uh, most popular online business model series. When that was the very first blog post series I ever wrote, like the first few months. And that still gives us thousands, I think a few tens of thousands of visitors every single month, uh, all these years later. So uh, that worked <laughs> quite well. My theory was uh, like, okay, well, I only know one of these business models. Other people are probably like me. They're very interested in the space, but they don't understand all the different business models. So when if we just wrote a quick explainer of what that looks like, what is the business, the pros and cons of each, so the buyers can understand what makes sense for their personality and skill set. And that's still today the one of the high one of our highest traffic blog post series I've done. And funny enough, our competitors, whenever they do pop up, that's usually the first series they try to copy, although they never outrank me. <laughs> mm. That's awesome. So you walked in day one and it was pretty much create your own uh position create your own um content strategy marketing strategy and you better do good because we just relocated you across the pond um, so that's fascinating and also intimidating i would assume were you scared were you nervous did you have some head trash around what you could do what you were capable of Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we were talking, uh, you know, offline about all the fears, doubts, the gnawing uh, endlessness of it all, right? The imposter syndrome, which every entrepreneur has, and you, like, especially when they begin, because you have no real recourse of like, you have no evidence of your skills working yet. Like, uh, it's just like up in your mind. And if things are up in your mind, they're often like being pummeled down by the other things in your mind, like doubt, right? So I had tons of that stuff when I first began that. And, uh, like I, even today, I still have some of it, right? Not nearly as much as I used to, but when it comes to other stuff, I still have some of my doubt. And uh, my team, when they come on board, they have that doubt too. But I always try to make a safe space for my team and tell them like, look, most of marketing is about failing. So it's okay if you fail, because that's just like one step closer to a win. And once we find the win, we double down on that. 
then we go through another litany of failures to find another win we can double down on, right? Like that's just the name of the game. Um, so it took me uh, quite a bit to get used to that and to the new work environment. But uh, it was also very freeing because I'm a very creative person. So I was able to overcome all that stuff as I just started going. And there was a point in my career where uh, a guy I really respect, actually, uh, a guy I used to read his blog post when I was on the oil rig. And you're talking about how to build like an affiliate website. And uh, it turns out he's Vietnamese. So I, I had no idea that, that was the case when I was on the oil rigs. But I actually met him here in Vietnam because he lives in Vietnam. And he was starting to uh, ask me for advice on what to do uh, for his site. So like, oh, this is crazy. Like this guy who's like kind of like one of my heroes when I was trying to uh, escape my previous life, so to speak. But he says something to me really funny. Like, man, he just sent me a, a Facebook message. Like, Greg, I cannot escape you. I'm like, what do you mean? This is probably like three years into my career. And he's like, I went to this one blog that I like. There you are with a guest post. Then I go to this podcast. You're on the podcast. You're like the first one. Then I go to this accounting firm to help me with my online business. I go to their blog to see what's going on over there. Like, there you are again. Like, you are everywhere. You're in every group, every Discord, every Reddit. Like, <laughs> like oh, my strategy is working. So you're going to sell your business? Like, yeah, I just submitted <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So full immersion marketing, right? Like, you're showing up in your category everywhere right? Becoming the go-to uh, person, the go-to company uh, for clients who are looking for the services that you have. So let's speak a little bit about practical advice on growing um, an existing business for our listeners right now that, listen, they haven't even got to six figures. They're at 80. They're at 50. They just can't get over the hump. They don't know what they're doing wrong. They're looking at everyone else on social and everyone else seems to have it all figured out, the glitz and the glamour. <laughs> and they're looking in the mirror and saying, what the heck is wrong with me? I'm a crappy business owner. I put everything in for this. My kids are depending on me. My spouse is depending on me. Like, what if this goes under? What do you want to say to them? What advice do you want to give them? Give them your top three tips and strategies around marketing their business. Because as we know... The better you market your business, the more uh, clients come in, the more leads, right? And then you can convert them into customers. And man, when money's coming in, a lot of problems get solved. What do you got for That's them? That's true. Uh, my first piece of advice for them, because I've been in this situation, uh, and it, it could be a dark place, you know? Uh, but the, there's a few things that is going for an entrepreneur, even if they're not making any money that they can do right away, even if they have this type of stuff going through their head. One is I'm a very stoic person. I practice stoicism all the time and mindfulness, meditation, all that kind of stuff. It, like whatever, like it doesn't have to be those things, but find something that emotionally grounds you and don't fall in love with results, fall in love with inputs, with the process. So like, if you're like, say you're running a, an agency and you know, every hundred calls I make, I get one really good appointment. Don't focus on getting the client, focus on doing 200 calls. Like that's the thing you should be like, that's your goal, 200 calls. Like don't even care about the results when you first begin, just do, do, do. And you'll eventually get to your numbers. Like you, you, it's amazing when you focus on process like that, how much further you can go. Uh, the other thing I would suggest for, uh, for someone who's already making money, if you have those doubts, like ask yourself, what is the absolute worst thing that can happen? In most businesses, the absolute worst thing that can happen is I lose everything, right? well, good for you. You actually made some money. So that means you have skill sets. Like I got hired at this job, not because like I made amazing affiliate websites. I had a litany of failures, but I had all this experience of trying different things. So I was able to find another job. I was able to be able to find this job rather to get going. So like there's always plan Bs. And by understanding what is the absolute worst outcome, you can create a plan for that. And now all that stress kind of goes away. You know what you're going to do if the worst of all possible realities happen, right? Uh, so that's an, uh, one other important thing. The next, if you're running a service business, so again, like a client business, like you, you mentioned clients, the most common thing I see entrepreneurs do is they vastly undercharge for their services. They usually underprice themselves. And in the beginning, it makes absolute sense. You should totally price cut to get those first few people in, get testimonials, build social proof, all that kind of stuff. But you got to grow out of it. And that could be a scary place for a lot of entrepreneurs. They think, well, if I raise my prices, 
my clients will leave. Like, fine, don't raise your prices for that client. Raise your prices for all your new clients. You don't have to tell the, the old client, right? Uh, but I have friends that like, they are incredible, incredible marketers. And they still have clients that are paying them like $750 a month. Like, you are not making anything for that. Like, you have other clients that you're doing 10 times less work for $5,000 a month. <laughs> like, why do and, you still have this person, you know? <laughs> and Gregory, you and I both know that those $750 clients probably represent their biggest headache clients. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hands absolutely. down. Hands uh, down, right? So they suck all their time, their energy, and they get the least amount of return for those clients. Happens and they're all often the, time. the hardest ones to actually service too. Cause like your margins are very small already. Mm -hmm. And usually they're extremely stressful. Like you mentioned, they care about every single dime. So mm -hmm. they're often not great clients long term, but they can be, you know, decent when you're first starting out, of course. But yeah, so un undercharging is a big problem with entrepreneurs, both in the, the service space, but also even the e-commerce space. Like I see that as well in the e-commerce world. Mm. All right. So Startup Nation, I just pulled uh, three points, uh, three pieces of wisdom and advice from Gregory for you. So if you didn't catch it, uh, click replay, but I'm going to give you a summary. So number one. Gregory says, fall in love with your process, not with the results. Fall in love with your process, not the results. Results come and go. Process stays the same. Second, number two, create a plan for the worst outcome in your business. Create a plan for the worst outcome. Know exactly what you're going to do if it all burns to the ground, okay? And then step three, raise your prices uh, at the same pace that you're raising your skill set or you're raising the results that you're getting for your clients. So make sure that it's always aligned. So your expertise should never supersede your rate. Does that make sense? Like that's important to really, to really get. All right, Gregory, <clears throat> thank you for that. Gregory, you told us your number one marketing strategy that helped uh, Empire Flippers attract more customers. And it was that one blog that you wrote uh, that's still paying dividends today. Uh, give us, uh, the number one marketing strategy you've seen work for uh, client companies um, that have become successful and, and acquirable and very sexy and attractive to potential investors. Is there like one top marketing strategy you've seen out there that Startup Nation can apply to their business regardless of uh, what industry they're in? And what is it? Yes. Uh, this is not an easy strategy to pull off and it takes a long time to do. But if you are successful, you will dominate your market. And that is becoming a media company. Think like a media company. All your marketing you do for like, say you're running an agency. Don't like if you're running like a, a Facebook ads agency or something like that. Don't just be another Facebook ads agency. Become a marketing media company for your specific niche. Like if you serve roofers become a roofing media company. Uh, I, this is the same strategy I use at EF, by the way, is becoming a media company for entrepreneurs. Like we have podcasts, we have YouTube channels. I go on other people's podcasts. We write blogs. We do all sorts of stuff, webinars. Uh, we're creating communities. We have a newsletter that is like the most uh, well-read newsletter in the, in the entire industry. That doesn't just talk about our stuff. It talks about the whole industry, right? Uh, kind of like uh, the hustle or a morning brew for uh, M&A for online businesses, right? So, so if I could jump into that yeah. for a second, if you're speaking right now to a solopreneur, they, they are the team at their own company. What's their first step for doing that model? The easiest strategy for a solopreneur to do that is to start a podcast, uh, specifically a video podcast. And there, that's because the podcast serves multiple functions at once. And in content marketing, you'll find this is, tends to be true. Like just because a blog post is written for like top of funnel doesn't mean it's not also serving like the mid and bottom of funnel. So what I tell solopreneurs is start a podcast. If you're a service B2B kind of business, at least it works really well. Create your dream 100, the clients you really want to work for. So in the case of a roofing agency, reach out to the entrepreneurs who own those roofing companies to come onto your podcast to talk about the business of roofing. That does a few things for you, right? Now you're not cold calling with everyone. He's a cold call. You're stroking their ego, right? Everyone wants to talk about their story. You get them onto the podcast. What happens after a 45, 50 minute conversation? Now you have rapport, right? You have some stuff going on. So you're building a relationship with your ideal client and you get to use it as marketing on your actual podcast. And then what you do in terms of the media company aspect is 
people tend to overcomplicate this a lot is you just simply use a tool like say capwing.com or Descript. These are both really good tools for this. And you can take chunks, say like 30 second, 60 second chunks of it and post it to YouTube, to your shorts, TikToks, reels, all that kind of stuff to feed those places. And you can even use a service like Loomly to where you can not just post once, but it will automatically regurgitate that content over and over and over again. So as you do like say a hundred of these podcasts, each one about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, whatever, you're actually able to take that one piece of podcast and in another about hour, two hours worth of work, you can have literally dozens and dozens of pieces of content that are always going out over and over again. And often those are going to be evergreen conversations. So you can just use them over and over and over again. So that's what I would recommend well, with that strategy. Uh, and it gives you a really easy like layup to actually have very deep and meaningful conversations with your target market. So your marketing, all of your other marketing will become much more informed. All right, there you go, Startup Nation. Pretty cool, valuable model uh, for marketing uh, your content out there. And it all starts with creating that one valuable piece of content that you can now repurpose into multiple uh, media platforms, right? And in doing so, you become a media company, right? That's kind of like the hack here. Uh, pretty cool, Gregory. So you mentioned video podcast uh, opposed to just audio podcasts. Why is that beneficial specifically? And then where do you post the videos other than just on Facebook, Twitter, and et cetera? Are you posting this on YouTube? Is that mm -hmm. the platform of choice? And here's my other question to that. How do you simplify all this posting? Because, <laughs> dude, this could suck up hours of an entrepreneur's life in a day, right? Oh, and absolutely. maybe they, they don't enjoy that and it's just an energy vampire. Is there a hack around this? What do you do? Yeah, so uh, one, all the platforms. I always say do all the things. Uh, so TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of it. Um, in terms of simplifying the process, there's a lot of different things you can do. So for example, if you wanted to offer a unique experience for your social media presence, say Facebook and LinkedIn, you can use something like StreamYard to do a stream, a live streaming to all these platforms at once. And the extra benefit for people showing up on social media is you're answering their questions. Now you take that recording and you can put it into a uh, software like Descript. I'm not very technical, by the way. I'm very not technical guy. I'm a creative dude, which makes me the worst technical person in the world. But uh, you put it in something like Descript, you can now edit that entire audio uh, file, like a text message or like a Google doc rather. Uh, very, very cool software. In terms of like why video, is because people relate to video very, very strongly. And it also gives you a lot more repurpose opportunities. Like if you take a 30 second video of this podcast of just like maybe the top three things I did uh, or the pieces of wisdom, or whatever you post on like uh, YouTube shorts. Well, all of those platforms right now are literally just like pushing so much traffic to it. Uh, I literally uh, have a friend, he uploaded uh, just to test it out. He uploaded a re-downloaded version of a TikTok up to a YouTube short, did absolutely nothing except for give credit back to the original TikTok profile. He did that with five videos, got 10,000 views in 30 minutes. So that's easy, <laughs> easy to do. In terms of simplifying this whole process, using a tool like Descript or Capway makes everything simpler. And once you're making a little bit of money, say, I don't know, like $4,000 a month, I recommend taking $500 a month outsourcing to a VA to do all this process for you. So you never have to think about it again. Uh, and the one other tip I will give on doing this well, because it's very easy to do this wrong and make it take up tons of time, mm -hmm. is when you design your show, I call it the master show, The uh, you should design it knowing you're going to do all this stuff in advance. So try to build the skeleton of the structure knowing what parts are going to be repurposed kind of in advance. You can't always master that. But knowing going in the, per the different segments you're going to be using here uh, will help you ed edit later on. Like, oh, yeah, when I ask Greg about the top three things, I can do a quick recording right after the podcast and me going one, two, three. I put the little words on my fingers. If, you, if, you're, if you're listening to this, you have no idea what I'm doing. But put the little words on my fingers for like Instagram reels. And, those, and the whole reel is just you doing those three things with a call to action to go listen to the full podcast or check out the full YouTube thing, right? Or the full video on YouTube. So that's the way you do it. It sounds really complex and overwhelming, and it is when you first begin, but you do it for about three weeks. You'll build out an SOP, 
and then you can give it to VA and never have to worry about it again. <laughs> All right. Start Nation and SOP. You build out that process that you fall in love with, and then you hand it off to someone else, right? And you pay them to do it. Now, listen, Greg was honest with us, right? He said, listen, it's going to suck at first, right? It's just what's so. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the time. There's no easy fix around that. Um, but in doing so, you'll develop a process that works, and then you can outsource that process. And then when you do, you got like this plug and play experience of automation where you can now go focus back on the creation side of your business, the vision side, the driving revenue side, and you got all this content just getting dispersed into the universe over and over just on, you know, set it and forget it, rinse and repeat. Uh, and eventually, as Gregory said, evergreen content, uh, you know, people will come back and listen to a podcast that I put out you know, two years ago and they'll click and come to me for maybe they want some coaching or whatever. And they're like, yeah, I just saw you on, you know, this show. And they act like it just happened, which always messes with my brain. Um, I'm like, <laughs> what show? When did I do that? You know? And it was like two years ago. They're like, yeah, yeah. Just on Tuesday, you, you had the, con I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that was two years ago on Tuesday, but okay. In your world, it was Tuesday. They're so like let's binge, They're just binge listening or binge watching. You exactly. I was like, all right. So pretty much you've been stalking me online and, and now you want to engage. Got it. They're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. All right, Startup Nation, I hope that's been serious value. I think Gregory showed up. He delivered. Um, so we're going to get into my favorite part of the show. But before we do, Gregory, one more thing, man. Like what's been your number one success habit personally uh, to keep you staying motivated and showing up and taking consistent action in your craft regardless of the results you experience? Yeah, yeah. Um one, I'm uh, hu very passionate about marketing, so that helps. I, I think it's a, a beautiful art form in a way. It, it sounds a bit weird calling marketing art, but I truly believe that. Um, but one of the things I do is I ask myself every night before I go to sleep, well, I don't ask, I write it down. I write down everything. I roll write down five things I want to accomplish tomorrow, and I'll put three stars next to three of the items. And those three stars are the items I consider to be the absolute hardest thing. I like, I do not want to do this thing. I like, otherwise I'll just put it off. And the next day, the first thing I do is those three things. I don't check email. I don't check social. I mean, after I drink my coffee and write my poetry, right. But then when I get into work and I, I should do some work stuff, those are the three things I do. And what you find is the thing you really don't want to do that you think is like going to be this Herculanean task often is a lot easier than you realize and doesn't take nearly as much time as you thought it was going to be. And because you thought those were the hardest things, you feel like motivated, like, man, I am a master of productivity over here. And then you start doing the other two things. Uh, and even if you don't get to those two things, it's okay because of the three things were what's really important. So I always have a list. Uh, the other thing I use to stay motivated, uh, I haven't done this recently and I should get back in the habit, is I keep a folder of awesome. You know, like, so much of marketing, like especially if a long sales cycle like us, we're selling people's businesses. I could take 250 to three years before someone decides to sell with us, right? To build up that kind of trust with us. So when we do get something that's just like random feedback, like because our attribution is so hard to do with such a long sales cycle, like people are like, oh, I love your YouTube channel, I love your podcast, or I love X, Y, and Z, whatever. Screenshot it, put it into a folder. When you're feeling down, open up that folder and remember, hey. They're awesome. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm a crappy human right now, but these people think I'm not. So right, I'm yeah. going to fill my head with good stuff right now to get me back <laughs> in the game. All right. Thank you for that, Gregory. Um, give us real quick in uh, one minute or less. This is a challenge. I'm challenging you, bro. Uh, what are your <laughs> top three things? Because we promised the audience. What are your top three things a potential acquirer uh, or investor cares about when they're looking at a business that they're interested in buying? Sure. Uh, profitability, revenue doesn't usually matter. It's really about your net profit. Is the business risky? Uh, you'll get a more premium valuation the less risky your business is. Growth actually doesn't matter as much when it comes to your multiple. It's all about how risky your business is. Mm -hmm. And third, do you have a real brand? So those are the three like top things that they'll go to. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome to my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the hustle round. Gregory, Ooh. I'm going to ask you <laughs> 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink oh it. God. It's just for fun. <laughs> it's like a, uh, a game show. Are you ready? All right. Sir? 
Let's do it. Let's do it. What, what's your favorite thing about owning a business? Building a machine of leverage. <laughs> Building a machine of leverage. I get that. What's your least favorite <laughs> thing? Owning the machine of leverage when it breaks. <laughs> yeah. It's all on you to fix that. All right. I believe we're all struggling with something at any given moment of our, of our life. It's just part of the human condition. What are you currently challenged with or struggling with either professionally or personally? Always a work-life balance thing. It's a constant battle. Uh, I've been winning it more than losing it lately, but I think it's always a good thing to uh, be reminded of, to work on. Got it. Uh, what are you most afraid of? Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> what did you spend way too? What did you spend way too much time doing your first year in business? Overthinking and not just doing. Yeah, just show up and do. Try, see what sticks. Right. What secret fear do you have about people? That they're an alien. <laughs> Hence your fear of aliens. My, my, my real fear is that uh, I'm not offering enough value for them. That's my real fear. Okay, got it. What do you wish you had learned sooner in business? It is better to do than to be perfect and about thinking what you're going to do. Ah, so true. What's a new habit you're going to create this year? Already created it. been working out three times a week. So that's a habit I'm going to keep on going. Let's go, rough. Gregory. Let's go. Let's go. What's a bad habit you're going to break this year? Uh, probably not. Uh, it's workout related to um, pro, like not doing my flexibility training because I'm trying to. Uh, I sort of picked up boxing, and flexibility helps a lot with boxing. And I am rigid like a tree. <laughs> I need to like actually do the at home practice part of it. <laughs> Listen, all this sitting in our home office chairs is killing us. It's a sedated life, right? We got to be yeah. mobile. We got to be in fluid, right? In motion. Pick three words to describe who you are now. Writer, marketer, and entrepreneur. Pick three words to describe who you were first year in this business. Terrified, writer, cynical. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And last question, Gregory, if you could come back to life after you died, look your family and friends in the eye and give them only one piece of advice about real success, what would you say to them? The night is long, but the dawn is around the corner. That's so hopeful. I like that. <laughs> Sounds like it came out of us, uh, Lord of the Rings or something. I'm a big right. fan of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> there you go. I kind of guessed that. Uh, homework assignment. This way you get to give Startup Nation a homework assignment for this week. What is one action that they need to take this week if they're serious about breaking that six-figure milestone? What do you got for them? Raise your prices. Raise your prices, Startup Nation. Raise your prices to match your results. Raise your prices to match your results. I'm telling you, that's a thing. All right. Startup Nation, if you enjoy this show, would you go to like Stitcher Radio, go to iTunes, go to first100k.com and write a five-star review? You could write it about Gregory. Tell him <laughs> how much you love him so that he can add you, a screenshot of you, into his folder of awesome. Come on, go ahead and do that, would you? In the meantime, Gregory, what's the best way for Startup Nation to get in touch with you if they so choose or to, uh, maybe they're interested in putting their business up for sale or at least you know, seeing if it's uh, desirable or attractive to investors? Where do they find out more? Sure. Uh, so empireflippers.com, obviously. Uh, if you want to reach out to me personally, it's greg at empireflippers.com or you can add me on LinkedIn or Facebook. You add me on Facebook, apologies for the poetry. If that's not your thing, you can just keep me to business, Greg, if you want on LinkedIn. But uh, I'm usually pretty easy to get a hold of. And uh, honestly, whether you use our service or not, I love helping entrepreneurs. So you have any questions, whether it's marketing, buying or selling, happy to help. Awesome. All right. So here's a shout out for one of you fantastic Startup Nation listeners. Uh, this is from this five star review is from Jeff WTC. Jeff WTC. Uh, and he writes Fantastic show. Joseph asked the direct and insightful question every entrepreneur needs to know. Love the conversation surrounding faith and ethically growing your business. All right, Jeff, thanks for that. And that's 
my these five star reviews are my folder of awesome <laughs> startup nation okay by the way I'm, greg i'm borrowing now that's cool man all right this is my folder of awesome so if you want to get in my folder of awesome listen i'm human like the rest of you every now and then i need to pick me up on a slow day you know to see why i'm doing this am i really serving you what value are you getting out of this show like have you moved the needle after listening to this show have you come closer to uh, bringing your dream into reality? Are you now making more money to support the family that you love? If so, I want to hear about it. Stop being selfish with your reviews. It's rude. Listen, stop. I'm kidding. All right. I'm not kidding. Gregory, am I kidding? I think I'm kidding. I don't know. Go leave a five-star review. Especially yeah, if it's about me so we can put it in both of our folder of awesome. <laughs> Look at this. Two gotta, folders gotta of awesome marketing. <laughs> yeah, folder of awesome squared. I love it. All right, go check out Gregory. Gregory, you've been a great guest. Thank you for the value you added to planet Earth. Uh, may God, I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life, my friend. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Hopefully the audience got a lot of value from it.